Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and should you ever pay cash for a car? Now, I had a friend that literally saved up around $30,000 by working selling jewelry on the side of the street, and he asked me, Tommy, should I go ahead and either buy a car with this money, $30,000 by the way, or should I buy a house, down payment, or for example, should I invest this money? Now, I'll tell you at the end of the video exactly what he did, you'll be surprised by the way, and I'll tell you exactly the math and everything behind it. But for this video right here, guys, I'm going to break down the credit side and also the investment side of either buying a car for cash, and by the way, you know, the end answer is not yes or no. The answer is it depends on your current situation and exactly what your financial goals actually are. So I'm going to break everything down in this video right here. And by the way, I post videos every single day on this channel. So make sure to also turn on the channel and hit the bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And on top of that, also destroy the like button. Now, the first thing is this, guys. As we all probably know, before I even get started here, we all know that buying a car is most likely 90% of the time always going to be in negative in your bank account. Why? Because of depreciation, you're paying cash for something, you're also being charged interest, and you're also paying a premium for an asset that basically depreciates by around 50% in the first five years. So in reality, it's always going to be a negative thing. And that's why in this video right here, I am talking about a used car and not really buying a brand new car for cash. But by the way, the example of my friend with $30,000 is about buying a new car. So again, again, stick around for that. You don't wanna miss that, okay? Now, the first thing is this, guys. When we compare cash versus credit, which one is actually better? Do you pay cash for a car? Or for example, do you go out there and actually just buy it with credit? The first thing is this. If you wanna buy a car for cash, here is an equation right here, okay? So say for example, you wanna buy this Honda Civic right here, it's a 2016 model, and on top of that, it costs around $12,000. A pretty solid car, right? So basically, if you grab some cash, you're like, okay, 10,000 per thousand dollars, boom, I pay for it in cash, boom, everything is over. All you're paying for every single month, to be honest, is probably like the insurance, the maintenance, and also the fuel. And that's about it, equation is over. However, that $12,000 is in that asset, which is actually liability in a sense, right? And it's actually every single year losing value and losing value. So the equation for cash is very simple. However, if you choose to go out there and basically buy that exact same car, Honda Civic 2016, four door, around $12,000. For example, you have a good credit score and you're paying around 5% every single year. In reality, your monthly payments are only gonna be around $226. I did all the math for you, okay? And the idea is this, okay? If you get a loan for five years, just five years, 16 months to credit, in reality, at the end, of those five years, all you're gonna be paying is around $1,587, again, at around 5%, and that's going to be around $317. However, the big pro is this, okay? You never had to give all that money, all at once. In reality, you can still use this money for whatever you want. And all you're doing is paying $226 every single month. But Tommy, I'm paying interest every single month. I don't wanna do that. And that's why I prefer to go out there and use cash. That way, boom, I pay for it once I'm done with the car, Boom, I go ahead and I sell the car. And by the way, guys, okay, if you have a solid car, by the way, this car is actually for sale. If you wanna look for it, go look for it, it's out there. But the idea is, okay, it has around like 75, 79,000 miles. In reality, if you have a solid car, you maintain it properly, it could give you around 300,000 miles. So that means a car can potentially last you around 15 years. Am I telling you to do that? The answer is, if you want to, you can if you want to, okay? But the answer is, I'm just telling you, if you take care of a car, it can last you a very, very long time. Now, before I compare, for example, using cash, and avoiding paying interest to just going ahead and for example, financing the car and also investing the money, I wanna tell you this one last thing here, guys, okay? The reason every time I talk about buying a car and I say, hey, buy a car that's four years old or five years old is because the math, the statistics out there, the studies, the data, it shows that basically a car does most of the appreciation basically in the first four to five years. After that, it slows down dramatically and that way you can basically hold on to a lot of the value of the car and not have to worry about your car losing like 20%, 30% in that first year, okay? You can avoid that by buying a used vehicle. So now, number two, investing the money versus just buying the car in cash. Well, the answer is this, guys. Just recently, I heard this joke, okay? And the joke goes like this. If you have a financial advisor and he tells you, hey, I have a great idea. 
All you have to do is give me $30,000, okay? $30,000, three of these, and I'm gonna go ahead and invest the money for you, and after five years, I'm gonna give you back $15,000. The answer is probably gonna be like, hey, um, you're fired, okay? I don't want you around my house. I don't want you in my phone number. I don't want you anywhere, okay? Because you're literally just going to have my money. Sp I don't know what you're gonna do with it, and you're gonna give me back half of the money back. In reality, whenever you buy a new car, that's the entire deal, you know, because it loses so much value. So that's why I'm trying to avoid you having to buy a car. But, but seriously, okay? But seriously, the answer is this. If you were to invest that same amount of money in that same example, around $12,000 and get back around 7% interest every single year, okay, for five years in total, at the end of those five years, you would have around 16,830 bucks, which is a lot of money if you ask me. So it would cover all of the interest, the $1,500, plus it will give you an extra $3,200. Hundred dollars, which means you basically got another twenty-seven percent on top of the cost of the actual car, which means that can actually help cover the depreciation of the vehicle. So obviously, whenever it comes to Tommy, do I buy a car for cash or do I basically go out there buy a used vehicle, avoid depreciation, and then finance it and then invest the money? The answer is that's probably the best way to actually get it done. But there's only one rule, okay? I'm not telling you to go out there basically grab the twelve thousand dollars and say like, hey, you know. What I'm going to finance the vehicle, pay $226 every single month, but then in reality, just grab this money and go out there and spend it on something reckless, okay? The answer is no. You have to grab the money and invest it and get back at least 7% every single year and just forget about it. Now, the best way to probably do this is just by investing the money into the S&P 500, the index fund. That way, every single year, you get back between 7 to 12% and that way you're good to go, okay? That means, okay, at the end of the day, you have enough money to cover all all of the interest and also enough money to actually cover all of the appreciation you actually got. And that is the idea. So whenever you ask me, Tommy, do I pay cash for a car? The answer is no. The only time you can buy a new car is if your net worth is above a million dollars. And it doesn't matter that much, okay? Then it doesn't matter that much. But you still can't buy like a $20,000 car. It doesn't make any sense. But that's the point I'm making here. But lastly, if you're still here, here is a story about my friend that works on the side of the street selling jewelry and managed to save up around $30,000. By the way, I think it took him like around three to four years to save up that much money, okay? Here's what happened. Have you ever spoken to someone and the conversation sounds like everything you're saying is actually getting through them? So basically, I spoke to him for around an hour and we spoke about like, hey, in reality, if you go ahead and you invest this money and you put it, for example, into a down payment for a house, you can probably get some real estate, rent some rooms, or for example, get a two family home in New Jersey and rent the top and then basically have that a piece of real estate, buy your car and pay it for you without you having to pay it yourself. And he said, Tommy, you know what? That sounds like a great idea, you know? I can go ahead, buy some real estate, get some rental property and have the profits pay for my vehicle. I'm like, yeah, exactly. A week later, I see him in this brand new car that he paid around $30,000 for. So obviously, he never took my advice. And three years ago from today, because I was literally like three years ago, well, that $30,000 right now is worth around $20,000. And every single year, it keeps going down and down and down. And by the way, if you're wondering, Tommy, what did you tell him, okay? The answer is, I smiled, I said the car looks great, it smells great, and you know, it's an awesome car. And I clapped and I said, okay. Because basically, you can tell people, like, hey, you made a big mistake. The answer is, sometimes people are not ready, you might as well not judge them and basically let them carry on, okay? That's the point here. So overall, if you ask me, Tommy, do I pay cash or credit, use or new? The answer is in this order. Used car, three to four years old, maybe five years, okay? You finance it at a low rate. By the way, um, Alliance Credit Unit has great rates over there. And by the way, you can probably get a car right now for like, for like maybe like 3% or 4%, 5%. It's a little extreme. That's why I used it. But on top of that, you can just do that for like five years, be solid, invest the money, forget about it. And then that way, guess what? Eventually, your money keeps growing and growing and growing. And by the way, after five years, don't take the money out, okay? Just keep investing more money and investing more money and make it a habit. That way, you retire with around like a million dollars or five million dollars. And that way, you're good to go. But overall, guys, that is about it for this video. Comment down below and let me know, are you planning to buy a new car, a used car, pay cash or credit or invest the money. Comment down below. Let me know how you're going to do it. And also let me know, what is your dream car? For me, it used to be, for example, like a 
Porsche Cayenne. Now it's a Lamborghini yours, but in reality, am I gonna buy that? The answer is there's a way to hijack cars and kind of like buy them for free without spending any money. And if you wanna watch that video about how to buy luxury vehicles and actually ride them and drive them for like a whole year or two years without spending any money, in reality, here's that video right here. And also click my face right here to also subscribe to the channel right now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching and as always, peace.